Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely day. So today I'd like to read an email from someone asking about diagnostic fees at car dealers when the car is under warranty. He's asking for my experience as a repair shop owner and my opinion on whether I think this is fair. And I think it makes for a good discussion. Good evening, Lewis. This happened to me three times in the past few years. I brought a newer car into the dealer for warranty at Volkswagen, Kia, and Chevy. Once for suspension issues, once for an engine issue, and once for a door lock issue. The dealers wanted me to sign that if they found that the repair was not covered under warranty, I would pay their multi-hundred dollar diagnostic fee. I understand the concept of them not covering something if there's outside damage. However, is it fair that there's no way for them to tell me whether or not it's covered under warranty without agreeing to pay a fee if it's not? I think with your experience running a repair shop, warrantying your repairs, you would be the right person to ask. A similar issue I once had, we have Tesla solar panels on our house, and a few months after they installed it, we had a roof leak. We called Tesla to inform them and asked if they could send someone down to tell us if the leak was from them or not. I understand that roofs can leak, and it's not for sure their fault. They said they can send someone out, but they want us to agree to pay a fee if the roof leak was not caused by them for the inspection. Should there be a way to find out if my problem is covered under warranty without repercussions if it's not? And obviously, this causes a conflict of interest. The person who's going to tell you if it's covered under warranty has a financial incentive for it to not be covered under warranty, because if it's not covered under warranty, they don't get to charge you the fee at least in the case of the roof leak. So there really is this perverse incentive that gets created that I under, that causes the customer skepticism. You know, the person who gets, it's kind of like insurance. The person who gets to decide whether or not what I'm getting done is covered by insurance is the person who stands to lose money if they interpret the 200-page EULA that I signed as covering my procedure that I'm getting done. So I completely understand the skepticism of the customer in this case. At my business, we have always provided a free estimate. Not only a free estimate in terms of if you are coming back for warranty service or claiming there's warranty, I will tell you whether or not it is covered under warranty at no cost, but we also don't even charge for an actual estimate on your product. The reason I do this is because my business is very, very specialized. I work on a specific niche of products. We are experts in that specific niche of products. It's not like we're figuring it out for the first time every time. And we have everything that we need. We have the parts, we have the cables, chips, screens, like pretty much everything that we would need to provide you with a detailed estimate. If you're asking us to work on something for which we do not have expertise, there, that, there I can understand charging for an estimate or a diagnosis because in that case, I have to buy parts, I have to buy tools, I have to learn. And the reason that I got so good at this that I could go, pin 8 on U1950 is what is causing PMPCH power okay to flicker because of corrosion, and that is causing PM sleep best for auto pulse. Without even opening the machine, once I saw the milliamp reading from the amp meter. But to get that good, that took 40, 80, 120 hours of practice on that specific machine. So once I get good enough that I can do that, once I get good enough that I have all the stuff stored in my head, it's very easy at that point for me to offer you a free estimate or a free diagnosis. Half of the time, I could probably tell you what's wrong with it without even seeing the machine, just based on a few things. And I used to do that on my forum on a regular basis where people would ask a couple of questions and I would say, check pin eight in here. And they go, how would you know that was corroded? And I go... <laughs> It was fun. I missed that. I missed those days a little bit. But in all seriousness, once you get really good at working on a particular niche, it is very easy to provide an estimate. So we don't bill for estimates for devices that we work on at our store. We only bill for estimates if A, you ask me to work on something that is completely unrelated to my job where I didn't do the work already. Like if I have 10,000 MacBooks coming in this year, it's worth it to me to put 100 hours of research and time into figuring out all the things that go wrong with these devices and what it is, what's worth fixing, what's not, etc. It's not worth putting 100 hours of research into a device if I'm going to see it once. So if you're giving me something that is just not something that I work on, I will charge you a fee. The second time that we would charge a fee is if you worked on it yourself and destroyed it. So, you know, you say it's not turning on and by the way, I took my soldering iron and I did this and I ripped 80 components off the board. At that point, we charge you because we have a no-fix, no-fee policy. We don't bill you unless we fix it, which means that there has to be a good chance of us fixing it. If there is not a good chance of us fixing it because you have destroyed that chance, we bill you. This is not a case. Warranty is not a case where I would ever charge a fee to a customer, and it's almost unfathomable to me to imagine charging a fee to a customer for me to tell them whether or not it's under warranty. That's covered under the profit from the initial repair. So many people will say, well, they have to do work, it's their labor, and so on and so forth. They made money when they sold you the car. So the way I see it is if I bill you $325 for a repair, you're not paying for me to do the repair. 
I mean, you're paying for the repair, but you get my point. You're not just paying for the repair. You're paying for the time that I spent learning how to do that. You are paying for the receptionist that smiles at you instead of saying that he hates his life and wants to go back to playing League of Legends when you walk into the store. You are paying the rent on the building. You are paying the customer service you get after the repair. You are paying for the warranty as well. You're actually paying for that. That is bill. That is what you're paying for when you pay for the service. So if you come back and you say, I'm not kidding. I had somebody say after I did a motherboard repair, my computer feels heavier when you were done. Did you use leaded or lead-free software? Daughter. I, I'm not kidding. This happened on a machine where I just replaced an ISL 6259 and two current test resistors. They actually paid me to go back and forth with them for 20 minutes with customers in the store and to be polite with them the entire time because they paid for the repair. So in my opinion, if a dealership sells you a $30,000 vehicle, they're not just selling you the vehicle. They're also selling you that service. So they, again, the vehicle is sold. They are required by law to offer a warranty. If you are required by law to offer a warranty, you work that into the price of your product. So you already paid for that, in my opinion. So for them to bill you after the fact, not for the repair, but simply to tell you whether or not it is in warranty, in my opinion, is immoral and unethical, particularly when we're talking about dealership here and not a general services mechanic. If we're talking about a general services mechanic, that is different. But when we're talking about a dealer, like again, a Chevy dealer, a Chevy dealer is primarily going to work on Chevy vehicles. They're going to have all the tooling that is necessary for Chevy vehicles, the software diagnostics for Chevy vehicles. But above all, mechanics that, since they're working on Chevy vehicles day in and day out, are going to know the things that tend to go wrong with them. They're going to know all these little tricks and like how to get the bezel off in an A1237 MacBook Air without damaging the plastic nubs in the bottom of the casing or something. These are the type of things that you're going to know when you're a dealer technician. It's going to make your job easier for working on these vehicles. So if you specialize in this specific product and you sold the customer that product at full retail price and you are looking to charge them to tell them whether or not something is in warranty, I think that's far-fetched. I completely understand that people need to be paid for their services, but I think the model for this shouldn't be a model that's screwing people. You know, like when I buy food, it's offensive to me that I could pay $50 for a meal and the person behind the counter is getting $3 an hour and has to go over to their boss and beg them for more money to fill up the difference between their paycheck and minimum wage if I don't give them a tip. I think that's ridiculous. I paid $50 for the meal. Why do I have to give you an additional 5 or $10 so that you can get minimum wage when I paid 50 bucks for this meal? I feel like the cost for the meal should cover the service. And this is a problem with tipping culture. And the other problem that I have here is, again, I paid for the car. I gave you $30,000 already. The car is sold with a warranty. If you did not get paid enough for the car, then you should change the pricing of the car rather than try to screw me afterwards and nickel and dime me. And the problem that I have here is that way too many companies are not charging what they need to charge up front. They nickel and dime you later. Whether we're talking about HP with ink DRM that they try to sneak in with these ridiculous free offers, like you get this free ink for a month or two, and then you have a printer that's forced to use overpriced OEM ink that's not better than the aftermarket for the next five years that you use the printer. I don't like these business models where they're not brave enough to ask for the money up front. They don't ask for it up front, but they try to kind of trick you and nickel and dime you uh, later on. I would much prefer that businesses be upfront with their pricing. And again, do realize that when we set the prices for our services, we are selling you everything. Again, the receptionist being nice to you, the warranty, somebody that I pay a living wage salary to talk to you for 20 minutes when you call back to argue with us that your computer is heavier because we use leaded solder instead of lead free when after your repair is done. Like, that has all been accounted for. That is all being billed for. It's my responsibility and accountability to come up with a business model that works. It's not yours to subsidize the fact that I don't wish to provide support for the products that I sell you. And again, to be clear, we're not always going to agree. You know, when it comes to warranty, you have a lot of people that will say, like, you fixed my motherboard and three months later the screen cracked. I'm sending it back to you for warranty. Like, ha ha, no. Uh, there are going to be a lot of times where I disagree with the customer and they are not very happy with what is covered by our warranty and what is not covered by our warranty. We have a lot of back and forth that we do with our customers when they think something is in warranty and it actually isn't. If I fix your motherboard and your screen cracks three months later, that's not on me. That's on you. Screens don't crack on their own. Screens crack when you do something to them. And there are many times where we're going to have those disagreements, but I'm not billing you for that disagreement. I don't think I have the right to bill you for that disagreement. I, I already billed you for the service, and that service includes warranty, and a part of warranty includes me having a conversation with you to figure out whether it's in warranty. 
Now, again, I could understand the argument with cars, it's much more difficult because, again, opening a laptop or a cell phone is easier than taking a 3,000 pound vehicle, putting it up on a lift, and taking everything apart to get to the inner parts of it to figure out if something is or is not in warranty. I understand that. But at the same time, cars also cost a lot more than computer repair. I am charging people like $100 to $300. Some of the more higher end services are $400 to $500. Automakers are charging you thirty thousand, forty thousand, fifty thousand now for a car. Surely somewhere in there, there's a little bit of profit worked in for the fact that they have to provide a warranty and the fact that they have to figure out whether or not the device is covered under warranty. I, I think that that's, I think that's reasonable, and yeah, I mean, I, again, I we have different industries. But I, I think it's a reasonable parallel. The one last thing to consider here is that there are customers that may just like to waste your time. There are people that are going to come in and say, I hear a clicking noise and you drive the car for 30 minutes and there's no clicking noise. And then, you know, they bring it back and they say there's a clicking noise and you drive it for 30 minutes and there's no clicking noise. And I, like at some point, I understand where the dealer may want to tell you, you know what, if we don't hear a clicking noise this time, you got to give us 20 bucks. There's like 20 bucks just for the fact that I spent a half hour on the damn car. But that doesn't seem to be the case here. The case here appears to be that you are being asked for a number of different issues th that you have to pay for them to tell you whether or not it should be covered under warranty. I think that's a predatory practice. I think it's a shitty business model. And I most certainly would try to avoid car manufacturers that do that. Again, one of the things I say on this channel is once one manufacturer gets away with it, every manufacturer tends to follow suit and do the exact same thing. And that would be really sad if that was the case here that every car manufacturer sees, huh, it looks like Kia, Volkswagen, and Chevy managed to get away with charging the customer to figure out if there's something wrong. Maybe we can do it too. And I'm very curious to hear from all of you down below which car manufacturers do this and which car manufacturers don't from your experience. Once we have a good little thread going with those comments, I will pin it so that it is easy for everybody to see. I'm actually considering adding an addendum to repair.wiki. A lot of people you have been asking for this, which have been companies that do non-consumer friendly things in general and having an archive of it. So every model, year, and what they did. I wanted to make this a positive one, which is what companies are repair friendly, are ownership friendly. And the, honestly, here's the problem that I'm having. Where do you find that? Like, okay, let's list the companies that will make parts and schematics available to the owner if they wish to purchase them easily. You're going to have like a white piece of paper there. Fairphone. Framework. Anybody else? <laughs> it's one of those difficult things where it, 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 I, I'm actually, I am thinking of this, of adding to the repair wiki and having a separate section just for when companies do messed up stuff, whether it is denying you warranty because you used compressed air like HP Enterprise or HP DRMing their printers. I'm thinking of making a play the repository where people can post every anti-consumer thing that many of these companies have done so it's very easy to scroll through before you purchase a product and figure out if that product or that company does it. I'm working on it. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video.